Hey, good morning. Here's a moment in white history. Let's talk about that time when a group of white women went and rewrote American history in favor of white supremacists. They're known as the United Daughters of the Confederacy. They were founded in Nashville, Tennessee in 1894 in order to preserve, propagate, and promote Confederate culture for future generations. The women who made up this group came from elite slaveholding families and used their social and political clout to spread their pro-Southern version of the war as real history. They're the same forces that took over public spaces from across the nation in order to erect monuments to the Confederacy, its leaders, and its white supremacist beliefs. And more importantly than that, they kept a tight grip on the history that was taught in the South. You see, they spent decades spreading misinformation, reshaping textbooks, and rewriting a history whose goal was to minimize slavery's role in the Civil War, promote the Confederacy as heroic, glorify the Ku Klux Klan, and portray white Southerners as victims of the North. This bevy of barbecue Beckys were committed to spreading the truths of Confederate history, so they instructed school boards to reject any textbooks that did not accord full justice to the South, and they urged libraries to write the words unjust to the South on the cover of every book in their collection that did not measure up to the UDC standards. By 1905, at the annual North Carolina UDC convention, Helen Debonair Willis, the chair of North Carolina's division's textbook committee, announced that all local school superintendents across the state of North Carolina assured her that no textbooks offensive to the UDC were being used. I'm talking about school systems in Asheville, Charlotte, Mooresville, Statesville, Alamance, Cumberland, Orange and Pender counties had all gone about purifying schools from objectionable books, she said. At their annual convention in Wilmington, North Carolina in 1909, President Mrs. I.W. Faison, not pictured, said this. We must see that the correct history is taught to our children and train them, not in hatreds toward the North who differ from us, but in knowledge of true history of the South and the war between the states and the causes that led up to the war, so that they will be able to state facts and prove that they are right in the principles for which their fathers fought and died, and continue to preserve and defend their cause, until the whole civilized world will come to know that our cause was just and right. Now keep in mind, their cause was to build a nation built off the perpetual enslavement of Africans. She goes on to say, There's an expression often used by our people as the lost cause. Let us forget such, for it is not the truth. No, our cause was not lost because it was not wrong. Their lost cause lessons were taught to generations of Southerners to uphold the institution of racism and white supremacy, particularly through public school curriculums shaped by the United Daughters of the Confederacy. The UDC had an almost laser-like focus on making sure that lost cause propaganda was so ingrained in the minds of Southern youth that it would perpetuate itself for centuries. Their most effective tool? School textbooks. In Atlanta in 1909, the United Confederate Veterans got together with the United Daughters of the Confederacy and the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Each group appointed five members, which became known as the Rutherford Committee, after its most prominent member, Mildred Lewis Rutherford, who was the group's historian. The states also used the Lost Cause books in their school curriculums well into the 1970s. For example, in 1963, Tennessee started using a history book by Mary Utopia Rothrock called This is Tennessee, a School History. It not only erased slavery as the cause of the Civil War, but defended it as necessary to the economy of the South and Southern culture itself. So what did this cloister of Karens do to school systems who adopted books they hated? Well, they got them banned. They preferred textbooks that said black people were content being second-class citizens, and they pushed those books in Virginia well into the 1980s. Up until the 1980s, Mississippi's public schools used lost cause textbooks exclusively, and it took a federal court order to make them stop. Matter of fact, Mississippi students were not required to learn about the civil rights movement until 2011. You see, the UDC-backed committees made sure that no history books with a northern influence ever reached southern classrooms. 
they made sure that the language of approved textbooks aligned precisely with that of the lost cause. But their work with children went so much further than the classrooms. The UDC formed auxiliary groups outside of classrooms called the Children of the Confederacy, which were designed to get kids born in former Confederate states to actively participate in their version of history. Ever took a field trip to go pick cotton? Group leaders had kids recite call and response truths from the Confederate Catechism. Children up to the age of 18 would compete and be rewarded for memorizing long passages of the lost cause rhetoric. Sometimes their after school group leaders might teach them songs of the South like Dixie or have them write essays and visit veterans. You see, the United Daughters of the Confederacy achieved their goal of misinformation by shaping the identities of children who grew up with the lost cause by making history personal, and that made their story last so much longer. Generations of children grew up learning the narrative of the lost cause in so many ways, grew up to be segregationists in the 1950s and 60s. And those segregationists in the 1950s and 60s are now in the House and Senate trying to pass laws forbidding the teaching of true history. After World War I, the United Daughters of Confederacy started losing steam, but the damage was already done. For example, Texas in 2010, when the state revamped its social studies curriculum, the Republican-controlled Texas Board of Education removed slavery as the central cause of the Civil War and replaced it with states' rights. Republican school board member Patricia Hardy called slavery an after-issue, while other Republican members considered referring to the African slave trade as the Atlantic Triangular Trade. Ultimately, they settled on calling it the transatlantic slave trade, but still refused to refer to enslaved Africans as slaves. They called them workers. These new Texas textbooks were silent on the KKK during Reconstruction, and they never mentioned the Jim Crow era at all. It wasn't until 2018 that Texas revised its curriculum. Now they blame slavery, recession, and states' rights equally as causes for the Civil War. Even though they seceded the Union for the state's rights to enslave Africans for eternity. What happened in Texas in 2010 and 18 respectively is a direct result of actions taken by the United Daughters of the Confederacy in 1894. It shows the consequences of feeding lost cause propaganda to generations of students. So the next time you hear someone say something like, I don't believe we need to think critically about race in this country. Or, Confederate monuments are just about Southern heritage. That's, it's, it's heritage, not hate. Well, that's exactly what the United Daughters of the Confederacy wanted you to think. And that's how white women rewriting history to promote white supremacy became today's moment in white history.